Hello, I'm uh, James with Fellows Home Appliance, and today I'm going to show you guys um, what can happen if there's too much soap in your dishwasher, and a way that you can help to get rid of excess soap. So what I'm going to do is I have this dishwasher here, um, and I'm going to create a worst case scenario, and I'm going to put um, dish soap in here, um, which will obviously cause it to have a lot of soap bubbles, which will basically kind of show what's going to happen when you have a massive buildup of soap. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to pour this in here. And then I am going to start it. Have this little panel here so that way we can actually watch it run. So obviously right now it's just filling up. Now if you look, you can kind of start to see that there's some bubbles forming. Now once it finishes filling, it's going to really start washing a little bit more, and then we should start noticing quite a bit more bubbles. Obviously, as you can see right now, you know, we're starting to get more and more bubbles in there, and eventually... Um, as it gets bad enough, you're going to start to see the wash arms start to slow down because the wash motor is actually pulling in those bubbles and it's not able to get the pressure that it's needing. And a lot of times when that happens, you're, that's when you're going to start to notice issues of it's not washing correctly. Um, and then that obviously causes a lot of issues there. So as it starts to go, you should start to see it here pretty soon. Kind of look already, you can kind of see it starting to slow down a little bit. I see when this happens, it's just not getting the amount of force that it needs. And so when that happens, you're going to start noticing a lot of issues of your dishes aren't coming out clean. And eventually those soap bubbles are going to come up and over the lip and it's going to come up on, onto your floor. And that's when you're going to start noticing your water leaks. So now that it's kind of built up a good amount, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop it. And you can really see how many soap bubbles there are in there. Now, believe it or not, all you really need to solve this problem is vegetable oil. So you're just going to take this. Usually about a cap full is all you really need. Now I'm going to, because I put quite a bit of the soap in there, I'm actually going to put two capfuls in. And you just kind of let it wash and we'll see what your vegetable oil is going to do is see what any of these type of oils are going to do is it's actually going to cause your soap, the soap molecules to condense and it will slowly cause those soap bubbles to go away. Now see here if you look before the soap bubbles were kind of coming up and you couldn't see that heating element, that little black ring, and now they're starting to the, the soap is starting to condense and so you're starting to be able to see that again. And you're starting to see a little bit more speed coming from those wash arms and so as it keeps washing and getting that vegetable oil um, circulating through there, it's going to help that so soap bubbles to condense just more and more and more until eventually it's gotten it all cleaned out. And so that way, once it's gotten those all condensed, when it pumps out, it'll pump all of those, that soap out with it. And 
You see, right now we're starting to it's starting to drain the water out from its normal cycle. Now, as you can see right here, because of the fact that it obviously didn't have enough time to really get that vegetable oil circulating in there, that you obviously notice there's still quite a bit of bubbles. And you see, and that can be a really bad issue because at that point, when that happens. You know, it can still activate. There's a float switch in here that determines the water level, and those bubbles can actually cause that float switch to think there's still water in there when there's not, and then that can cause a lot of issues as well, because now you're not going to be filling up with as much water as what it's supposed to. Now there should still be enough vegetable oil in there, even though it drained it out, to really so that when it starts to fill and wash again, it'll help the soap bubbles to condense a little bit more. Obviously, you know, we're kind of doing this by running it a little bit. Uh, showing you how many soap bubbles there are. Usually when you're doing something like this, you're doing it at the very beginning before it's even started. So that really allows a little bit more time for your vegetable oil to really cut, get those soap bubbles to condense. So that way when it does pump out, it's able to get it all out. So we're going to let it fill up again and wash a little bit. And then that's when you're really going to start to notice a lot more of the soap bubbles going away. Normally, with how much soap was in here, this would be something that you'd have to be running and draining out almost all day before you would actually start to have any type of uh, solution on there. Now, you see, if you no looked and you saw there, it barely filled up with water. Because the reason for that is because, again, those bubbles activated that float switch and made it think that there was water in there even though there really wasn't much in there at all. So it barely filled up at all, and that's why it's not really getting a lot of pressure to it. So what I'm going to do real quick here is I've actually got a bucket of water, and I'm going to pour that in there. So if you notice now, I mean, there's barely any soap bubbles. And like I said before, this was going to be a problem that, I mean, we would have had to run it all day in order to get all of those soap bubbles that we started with out. And so, you know, you can see why vegetable oil is an absolutely amazing thing to use, and it really helps reduce a lot of these soap bubbles and get your dishwasher cleaned out. So thank you for watching, guys, and hopefully you guys have learned something.